So today what I'm going to go over is setting the global variable to new or edit based on what screen you're on. Then we're going to set the defaults in all of our fields in our form. Then what we're going to do is the change the patch to our default to our current selected item. And finally we're going to reset all the fields defaults uh, on the visible of the form. Hey everyone, this is my SharePoint questions. So uh, this is my fifth video. If you are not caught up, please watch some of the previous videos. Uh, a lot of the questions that you may have may come from there. But I've created a new event for Independence today. Today is July 4th for me, so thank you everyone who fought for my independence. Now when I select on Independence Day, you can see I have three galleries here. And when I select a in this drop down, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new form or a new line item in that table. So in my social media table we can see that I have some previous data in here and this is one of the issues that I want to talk about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new line item called Twitter and I'm going to change it uh, some of the selections and I'm going to save. And when I go back you can see I have a new line item. But let's say I created a new form. It still has the old data in there. So I'm going to go ahead and create another one just for demonstration purposes. We can see when I create a Facebook and we go back, you can see in Twitter it still has the old Facebook data in there. And what we do is when we're patching our statements, we don't want to do that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a global variable. So my global variable is not like a context variable. A context variable if you do you know update context that's going to be for that sheet a global variable is going to be across all sheet screens of your power app so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do set and that set means global variable and I'm going to create a variable called variable form and what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it as edit so that's telling me hey this is going to be the edit screen on my drop down on the on change what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the variable as new. So now when I click on my dropdown, I'm going to be in a new form. And when I click on my gallery, I'm going to be in edit. But that's not everything we, need, we want to do yet. So right now, I clicked on the Twitter uh, line item. I'm going to first show you the text single line text box. So in the property of defaults, what we want to do is say if my variable form is equal to edit, then we want to that locate that gallery. So that gallery is called gallery, I believe it's social media dot selected dot number of views. That's the column that we're using else we're going to make it blank and you notice it converted it to one so let's go check out the new form so I'm going to go back I'm going to select the new form you'll notice it's blank that's what we want on that text box if we go to Facebook it'll be two it's correct if we go to Twitter it will be one that's correct so I'm going to do that with all three of my single line text boxes. So all three of my single line text boxes are set up. So now let me show you a drop down. So a drop down is a little bit different. If you were to create a new drop down, I think this will happen. Let's let's see if we we see it. We create a new drop down and we go to the defaults. You'll notice that it says one. It doesn't say blank. So pretty much that's your first selection. So even if I were to change uh, my, my drop down, let's say if we change the items, we change the items to A, B, and C, you'll still see in the default selected, it's actually one. That's just saying the first item in your in your property items. So if we go back to default, still the default is one. So we're gonna do the same thing 
for the default of our dropdown. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, I'm just going to copy paste. If variable form is in edit, then we want to take the selected, the selected social type of social media. Else, if it's in the new form, we want one, our first option in our selection. So let's go to the new form social media you notice now it's blank actually the first option in my drop down is blank and then I have my other ones and then all three of these are now blank and if we go to the Twitter you'll see it selected each one of those so now finally I want to show you a combo box and this is how I do combo boxes with SharePoint uh, there's many different ways but actually my field here that it's patching to is actually a single line text. So I'm going to add a combo box. And this combo box is going to have the same items as my languages before. So it has the same items. We can select a few. Let's say maybe the Twitter post is in multiple languages or it's for multiple languages. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a label. And this label is going to concatenate all my selections in my drop down box. And that way I can just write it to a single line text. So in the text property of my new label, what I'm going to do is I'm going to concat. And I have to figure out what this drop down box is named. Our combo box. We'll rename it to a combo language. How about that? So it's named combo lang now. So we're going to concat combo lang dot selected items. And what are we going to concat? We're going to first concat the value that's selected and then a comma. So now we have all three of our selections, the value and a comma, the value and a comma. You can add a space in there if you want. And I'm going to delete this uh, drop down because we're going to just now use a combo box. So now what we're going to do is we're going to actually patch this single line text field instead of the combo box. The language is actually equal to label lang dot text. It'll let me format just so we can see what we have here. So I'm actually uh, patching social media right now. We're not default to anything, but I will step into that next. So right now with our patch statement, we're only going to be creating new line items. And we're going to do language as the text box, the label that I just created instead of, instead of the drop down. So now the next step is I want to default my combo box. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of my items names and I'm just going to copy that. I'm going to go to the default selected items properties. So in here, actually a combo box is an array. So an array is multiple choices. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing before. So if variable form equals edit, then what I want is to filter And then I'm going to put in all my selections, the value, comma value, in split of the gallery social media dot selected dot languages and then I'm going to do by comma, so I'm going to be splitting it by comma in parentheses else it's equal to a blank array so I just had my uh, comma in the wrong place so let's go ahead and save one Twitter and when we come back to it you'll see that our selection is still chosen and here it's single and here it's also single. My patch statement, I need to save to 
the selected item instead of creating a new item. So it's pretty simple. All I need to do is patch to the ID number in SharePoint. So the ID number of my gallery social media. Let's see gal social media dot selected dot ID and that's it. Now I'm this is where defaults go, but what I'm doing is I'm selecting the ID of my social media post. And wherever the ID in SharePoint equals the gallery ID, that's where I'm resaving. So let's go back. So now if I click on the second one that's Twitter and I change it to Reddit and I, I don't think I've added a picture for Reddit. We can change it to multiple languages and we save. We'll see now that it's Reddit instead of Twitter. We could change it back to Twitter. And now if we go back it's Twitter. So now we are saving back on top of our already written line item in SharePoint. So if we go back to SharePoint and take a look at my social media, you can see in the event name, so in Independence Day, which is today, the July 4th event, you can see I have three line items. All of them have the same event ID, but different IDs for the social media in SharePoint. You can see the number of views, the languages, the languages comes through as a single line text. Uh, and then the event name here. So there's one more thing we're forgetting. So on the visibility of this screen, and, and this is when you have to do it. You can't do it after you save. You can't do it when you hit the back button. What you have to do is on the visibility of your screen. So on visible property of your screen, you need to reset each one of your drop downs and combo boxes. So the first one is my drop social media. Let's see if I named it correctly. Oh, drop type social media. And finally reset our combo box, which is Lang. So now, every time we go into our page, you'll see that it's blank, even if we select something. And then we go back into it, it resets to blank. If we're inside Twitter, the reset sets it to default. So you're still fine here. Uh, that's exactly what you want. And pretty much that's my entire video. So thank you for watching. Uh, hopefully this is helpful. I know this took me many hours to figure out. It may seem simple, but there's a few things in here. If you're enjoying this content or if it's helping you, please like and subscribe. It does support me. I am new to YouTube and I'm I'm working on my speaking ability. So as you can tell, I'm not the best, but I'm getting better. And thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe and like.